All right, what's up everyone? This is Don with Third Creative and this is the walkthrough tutorial video for Ballpark Photoshop Template Bundle. In this video, I'm gonna walk you through all of the layers and the processes that hopefully you'll need to know in order to get the most out of this design to be able to customize it. Uh, keep in mind that all of the layers and the processes that I cover in this vertical file, they're going to apply to the other files as well. Um, at the very end, I'll cover a few unique things that apply to the horizontal file. Also explain the memory made, but otherwise, everything applies across the board. Uh, we will be working with this 2x3 vertical file. I always like to start at the bottom, so let's jump into it. The very bottom layer folder is entitled background layers. It's pretty self-explanatory. If I turn it off, we lose all the background layers. But if we open it up, we can take a look at what we have in here. Um, I will say there's really not much that you're going to want to do in here as far as customization is concerned. Um, but there is one layer uh, specifically that uh, you'll want to be aware of, which is this dirt infield for softball layer. It is turned off by default. So you can see that we have a grass infield, which is uh, generally uh, for baseball. But if we turn this on, we'll lose that grass infield. It'll change it to a dirt infield. And so that way you have the option available if you are creating images for a softball team or athlete. Um, just real quick, the other layers in here, at the very bottom we have a lower dirt extension. You can see I've extended the dirt of the infield. Um, looks like I failed to properly name this layer for some reason, but that's okay. It's just the image, the primary image of the background, so you can see what we lose. Um, I've got a levels adjustment and a hue saturation adjustment applied to these two layers with just some subtle changes. More than likely you're not going to want or need to get into those, but you can if you need to. Um, we also have our light layers. Um, this image that I took for this background, it had stadium lights here, but they weren't quite as cool as these, so I swapped them out. So we have our right light and we have our left light, and then we have these respective folders that include the layers that give the appearance of being on or off. Um, last layer in this folder is a background atmosphere. If I turn it off, you can see it, it drastically changes the background. Um, this uh, really is just there to put a little bit of haze or atmosphere, hopefully uh, make it a little more realistic. I have it set at 50%. I thought that was a, a good level, but you can adjust that if you want to. Uh, let's see. Next we have a color grade option. This color grade option is going to apply towards the background. If I turn it off, you can see it gets a lot cooler. Um, basically what I did here is I created a color overlay, set it to soft light, and reduced the opacity to 25%. You can increase or decrease the opacity if you want more or less uh, to be applied. Um, you can also double click in this box here and you can play around with it. There are some colors that just aren't going to look right. So if I go pink, you know, that just looks like uh, a terrible white balance. But if you go in the reds, oranges, maybe even the yellows, yellows start to get a little, a little weird. Um, you can even go into the blues if you're wanting to get a cool look. Um, I went with this orange. It just ties into their colors. You see the orange text, the orange in their uniforms. It just provides like a, a warmth to it. Um, so I just wanted to explain what that is and how it works and that you can turn it off. You can um, adjust it, um, like I said, with the opacity and by selecting the color. Um, next we have an option that allows you to do a solid background color. So you'll need to turn it on, it's off by default. So I went ahead and set up a kind of a high key grayscale. Uh, I figured that'd probably be the most common uh, setup that someone would want to use, but it is not limited to this. If you wanna change it, it's very simple. We'll double click on this little icon right here to open up our properties for it's a hue slash saturation uh, adjustment layer. And so the way it's set up right now, I have colorized checked, and in order to get the grayscale, I reduced saturation to zero. So there is, there's no color. And I increased the lightness 
to an amount that I thought looked good. If you want to go darker, you can simply drag this down and you have the option to keep it grayscale and just control how light or how dark. If you want to add color, we just want to slide the saturation up and really you'll have to play with it a little bit. Some people are intimidated by the HSL uh, panel. It's, it takes a little practice, a little getting used to, but it's not too hard. So once you've got some saturation showing, you can move this around and try to identify the, the color range that you're looking. If it still doesn't look right, you just come down and continue to play with these. You can darken it up, just move them until you get where you think it looks good or it looks right. You could just keep playing with it. But you get the idea. So that's how that works. Let's go back to the original state here. Um, next we have our upper text layers. Let's open that up and take a look. So I went ahead and built in two options. That's something I like to do is add more than one option. Sometimes I get carried away. But in this, this case, I was able to limit myself to just two. Um, you can always use your own uh, font or text layers. Um, you can use things from other templates. You've got all kind of, kinds of options. But let's open this up and look at option one. So the first uh, layer in here is for your team name. Um, you get this script font here. I've set this up where it works. I've got baseball just fitting just perfectly inside the B and the uh, tail for this G here. But when you change the name, you know, unless it's the same amount of characters and, and you know, something that's set up this way, you're going to have to play around with it a little bit, move things around. So um, let's just demonstrate. So if I were to change this to, say, Raiders, it almost works, but um, this would actually be pretty simple. You would come down to the next layer, which is your sport name, and move it over to fit. Um, but let's say you know you, it's a little more complicated. You need baseball to be a little tighter or a little wider. Of course, you can change it to say softball. Uh, always keep in mind in your character panel, you can control the space in between your characters. I believe it's called kerneling and I just click and drag left and right you can see how I can make it wider or narrower so that's something that will come in handy uh, when you're trying to arrange your text just right let's actually look at how the colors are controlled so let's go back again and let's zoom in to see a little closer so on the team name I set up a bevel emboss it's turned on if you turn it off you can see you lose some of that dimension or depth um, so that's up to you whether you want to leave that on or off. This white stroke outline, you, in order to change that, it's very simple. You would just double click here on these effects. It opens up our layer style panel or window. And make sure that you're on stroke here. You can see this box, click in here, and you can pick any color. Very simple. You can adjust the size um, if you want to. I have another stroke option built in but it's turned off by default so you can turn it on and you can see that you get one extra outline if that's a look that you want and it's the same thing you can click on the little box here to select your color um, there's also an inner shadow um, that you can turn on and off depending on the look you want um, the most important thing is how the color is controlled is a little different. I used a gradient overlay. It's something I've done in the past, but it's something that sometimes might trip someone up. And so you can come up here and you can change the color all you want. Let's change it to green. It didn't do anything. And that's because I have this gradient overlay. So if you turn it off, now you can see your green. But if you leave it on, um, it allows you to just add a little extra touch. Um, I like the look of a gradient because I can have a darker shade uh, down here at the bottom and it will gradually get lighter and lighter towards the top. So if you want to keep the gradient but you want to change the colors, it's very simple. Just double click gradient over overlay here. You'll see this window with this box here. If you click this box, it's going to open up the gradient editor. And really this is simple. In order to change the colors, you'll want to click on this first box to the left. 
this is going to allow you to select the color that it's going to start with at the bottom. So just keep in mind that you want it a little bit darker. So if you are going for green, you can come over here, find the shade of green, the darkness level that you want. Once you get what you want, we'll just hit OK. And we'll hit OK. Well, no, only hit OK once. You want to keep this window up. Now you just click on this right hand side box, click on the color box and repeat. We'll go back to the greens and maybe you want something a lot lighter. You can go back and forth and keep playing with it to get it how you want it. Once you get it how you want it, one extra tip that I'll share before you hit OK on this window, go ahead and hit New and by doing that it will add it to your presets and that way if you need to reference this gradient or these colors again it'll save you some time. It'll be there. So we'll hit OK and hit OK and now we've changed the color. Let's go back again. Uh, let's see, the sport name, it's just uh, pretty simple. It's got a drop shadow. It doesn't have anything else. You would change the uh, color by coming up here to your character panel. Very simple, very easy. Um, let's close that, turn it off, and let's look at option two. A few things to unpack here. Let's get a better look at it. All right, so I went ahead and added um, two options for what I call um, lower subtext. So the lower subtext you'll see is where it says baseball. Um, I have the same subtext option here as that we saw in the first option. Let's see, right here. It's just a little bigger, spread out a little bit wider. But I added a, a second option. If we turn this off and turn this on, um, you can see that I went with the script font as an option as well. So that is your choice. If you go with this, all of these layer effects and the way you control the look and the color is exactly the same as what we went over on this. So we won't cover that again, just know that it's all the same. So you have those two options for your subtext. Um, we've got an upper subtext, same thing. You can um, control the width with the kerneling up here. You can make it a little more compact. Um, it has a drop shadow that's built in. You can play around with all these drop shadows if you want to. Um, you can change the color, the opacity, the size, the distance, etc. But um, drop shadow is there just to add a little extra contrast or separation. In this case, I've got white letters on top of some white clouds. So I wanted to make sure that it stood out. Um, we have our team name, and this is all the same uh, pretty much as well. It has the gradient, which we already talked about. It's got an inner shadow. It's got two stroke um, options, one turned off by default. It's got the same bevel. It's got a drop shadow option if you want it. It's pretty much all the same. But one thing you'll notice is that I have an arch set up here. And not only do I have an arch, but I have the center uh, characters slightly smaller than the first and the last. Um, if you want to retain this look, there's going to be a certain way that you're going to want to edit this. So if you double click here to select your text and you just start typing, you lose that look. You keep the arch, but everything, all the uh, characters are going to be the same size. So we don't want to do it that way. Uh, what we want to do is select all of this with your mouse or cursor, you just highlight the first letter and you change it. Now we want to select all the center letters and we want to change those. Now in this case, the last letter is the same, so I don't need to do anything. But if you did, you would just select it and change it. Once you have how you want it, you just commit it. Um, now of course you can, if it's a shorter word and it takes up less space you can change the size make it a little bit bigger if you want to um, but this just comes back to what I was explaining in the first option you just got to play around with it and make it fit your space so this lower text option it's a little bit too high we'll bring that down you could play with the size you could play with the distance um, one other thing that I will uh, cover real quick let's see an option that's there if you want to, um, but by default it's, it's set up this way to be straight. This upper subtext is just straight. It's easier that way, but if you want to take the time, it might look a little nicer, a little 
cooler if you were to add an arch and kind of tuck it right in between these uh, first and last character here. To do that, it's very simple. Uh, we'll double click to select everything. Come up here, you'll see this box with a T and the uh, arrow. We'll open it up and this is your warp text uh, box option and we want to choose arch. Now it's going to start off at plus 50 which is way too much so you just drag it down and get it where it looks like it's pretty much consistent with the arch of the primary text. You can get it close, I'm going to commit it and I'm just going to bring it down and that's pretty close. I might, if I'm being real picky, I might bring it down from 9 to maybe 8 or 7. No, let's go with 8. It's sensitive. All right, I'll just type it in, 8. Okay, you can center it. And if you want, you can make it a little wider. Anyways, you get the idea. You can uh, you can add that curvature and tuck it in there. So another look, another option. Let's keep it moving. That's pretty much everything for your uh, upper text layers. All right. So next we have our subject folder. This is where you're going to put your subject images. Um, tuck them in here for scale and position them. Pretty self-explanatory. Next, we'll see another color grade option. This color grade option is clipped to the individual. So um, to keep it consistent, we'll, we're applying the same color grading down here on the background as we are your subject, but it is not affecting the layers in between, which is these text layers. Um, so you can make a match or you can make them slightly different. It's by default set up the same way with the same color at the same opacity, but you can play around with that if you want to. Um, next we have lower color fade and we have dirt slash dust over lower legs. So I'll turn this lower color fade on. By default it's white, it creates a little foggy haze here. Uh, most of it you cannot see because the layer, this wood layer um, is there, but let's Go ahead and turn the wood layer off because this is another look that you can go for. Um, some of my sample images um, I used, well, I didn't use the wood layers. Um, so going back to this lower color fade, um, you can control the color by clicking in this box. And an option you might want if you don't like the white foggy look is to try to sample from this dirt and so if you have this open and you come over on top of your image you'll see the you'll get the little dropper so you can sample from any of the dirt once you get in the general range you can play around with it make it as light or dark or saturated or or unsaturated as you want so you can find something that looks good so that is an option um, <clears throat> I've covered this in several of my videos but I still get the same question and that is this gradient mask if they want this dirt to not come up so high, or maybe they want it to come up higher, I say dirt, if they want the color. Um, you can adjust this, it's not difficult. Just make sure you have the layer mask selected. Go to this gradient tool, and if it's not in your toolbar, you can, you can look in this little fly out window here, but make sure you're on the gradient tool. Once you're on the gradient tool, it's very important up here, make sure that you are on black to white. So I'm on green to green that would not be good we want black to white because when we're dealing with the layer mask we're dealing with black and white black conceals white reveals so now we're all set up I like to hold down shift to keep my line straight and basically what I'm doing is I'm clicking where I want uh, complete opacity and dragging to where I want or actually the other way around zero opacity down to full opacity and so you can just keep doing it over and over playing with it obviously that looks terrible but you can see I'm just creating a new gradient mask each time I'm holding it down shift and I'm just clicking and dragging until I get what I want and that's how <coughs> you can adjust that um, if you change this color here 
Um, the next layer, dirt, dust over lower legs. You just want to make sure you have a little bit of contrast. It's not the same color. I've got a color overlay, and I've got this kind of tan color, but you can play around with it, change the color um, all you want. Uh, let's see. We'll turn the lower wood layers back on, and let's take a look at that. We'll open it up. Uh, first, I've just got some vignetting. Um, you can adjust those if you want to, but it's what creates these dark corners. Um, the main thing is this wood texture layer. I've got a layer mask on this, which is what gives us this curvature. Um, we have um, some stroke outlines built in, this white and this orange. So we kind of already co covered how to change the color on stroke outlines, but just double click them, select which one you want to work with, click on this color box and again you can add more you can um, you can play with the sizes you can you can play around with it if you want to but if you want to use it just how it's set up just click on those and you can change the color same thing we have inner shadow I also have a levels adjustment and a hue saturation adjustment to get this particular look so let's talk about that real quick um, there are some scenarios where you may not want this particular color of wood and if you want to change that um, you can turn on or off the levels but you can go into this hue saturation smart filter uh, we're gonna hit OK and we'll get our HSL window so you got some options you can right now colorize is not checked if you want like a colored wood texture like let's say you want red or purple or blue just hit colorize and like we talked about before go to the general color you're looking for and just play around with the saturation and the lightness and the darkness and you can colorize the wood if you want to do that um, but if you just want to change the look a little bit you can make it darker you can uncheck colorize, make it darker, make it more saturated, less saturated. Um, you have those options as well. Um, let's see. And that's it for the lower wood layers. I will say that if you use your move tool and you select this, you can uh, move it up a little bit. Uh, I guess you lose, you got a little bit to work with. You can lower it, you can raise it. Um, and that may be something that you want to do um, almost done last one we've got at the very top lower ribbon layers uh, no actually I skipped one two more to go we got lower text let's look at lower text pretty simple I'm gonna zoom in just so we can see better um, the way I have it set up right now um, is I have a few things turned off. There is a bevel emboss and there's an inner shadow which I have turned off. You can turn them on and you can see it's very subtle but you can see it changes the look. We've got kind of a, a shine or a highlight and a little bit of shadow. Um, I also have an inner shadow that you can turn on. So it's just a few options to get a few different looks. Um, primarily you would uh, change the color um, very simple it's not a gradient on this one just come up here to your character panel and then the stroke outline you can change the color and uh, same thing with the last name uh, and then the subtext I have set up for their classification in this case it's he's a junior it can be anything that you want um, but it's simple uh, to change the color it's up here in the character panel um, there is a stroke option that you can turn on, which is by default is white, so it makes it hard to see, but you can see there. You can add and adjust the stroke outline if you want to. And then there's a drop shadow that you can leave on or off. Uh, it's all very simple, uh, pretty straightforward. Now we have the last layer folder, which is our ribbon. So we're looking at this little graphic that I set up right here. Um, so let's go down to the bottom of this layer folder and I have another subfolder for ribbon layers. You can see I've got a couple shapes in here that I put together. Put them in a folder so that these um, effects that I set up will just apply to, to both of them. Um, so let's see, we have a color overlay and that's how we control this um, center color to get the orange. 
Double click on any of these and it'll bring up your layer style window. And it's all the same stuff that we've been talking about. There's a drop shadow in here, color overlay for the primary color, and then two stroke outlines to change um, the outer white and then this uh, thinner stroke outline. Uh, very easy. Um, we have, let's see, a bats layer, a bats graphic layer. All of these are kind of optional. You can play around with it. I have a sample logo just to let you see that you can drop your team logo in there. That's an option. Um, you can use the baseball only. You can add the bats. You can get rid of the bats and add the logo. All sorts of combinations that you can play around with here. Um, but by default, it's set up this way. So with the bats, it's the same color overlay to change the color. It has a stroke built in. You can turn it off. I kind of like the way that looks. And then it has a drop shadow for depth. We have a, a circle shape layer that just provides the, the center color for this baseball. So color overlay, you can change that if you want to. Um, there is a stroke outline that you can add. It's kind of thick, so you can turn it on. You can make it thinner or th even thicker, and you can change the color to anything that you want. And then we have our baseball seam colors. Very simple. It just allows you to change the colors of the outer outline and then, of course, the seams. So come in here. I set it to orange to match, but maybe you want a realistic red, um, which it's not a realistic baseball. It's more of a clip art graphic. Um, but you get the idea. We have a text inside ball option. So this is optional. You can leave it like this. You can add it. You could even make, you know, in this case it's Burke Burnett Bulldog. So I could make two B's and kind of overlap them and, and fit them inside this space. Um, there is a stroke option you can turn on if you want and of course change the color here. Um, and then we have a ribbon text. The ribbon text I have 2023 by default. So I, I type 2023 and I put spaces in between just so that one text layer would fit on both sides of this center graphic or whatever you put in here. But you can actually adjust this to say anything you want and you're not just limited to this space of this ribbon here. So for demonstration, I'm going to come back down to the ribbons layer. If you want this ribbons layer to be wider or even more narrow, with your move tool, click on a side anchor point and I am going to just drag straight out and now I will click and drag to center it and you can keep playing with it however now you'll notice the depth of these right here changes but I don't think that's a big deal it allows you to increase or decrease the size of this ribbon and then you can center it and use this uh, ribbon text layer to put whatever you want in here. So another customization option. All right, I try to do, try to go through that quickly, keep this uh, short but still thorough. Uh, but that is all of the the layers in this uh, particular vertical file. So let's jump over to a horizontal file. We'll cover a couple things, and then the memory mate, and we'll wrap it up. Okay, so I have the 4x5 file pulled up here. There's really not much to cover. Um, I just wanted to explain a, a couple things. In the sample image, um, I have uh, this particular baseball team, and I'm showing their feet. And showing their feet means showing ground shadows. Uh, I hand paint my ground shadows in, and uh, I understand that that's not something that everybody's interested in doing. So. Um, you do have the option to not show feet if you're not wanting to create your own ground shadows, which is understandable. This uh, sample image that I have pulled up here kind of shows another way to do it. Um, so I'm just going to kind of explain how you can get this look, um, which is really kind of tied into what I was explaining earlier. Um, really, it's just a matter of using the lower color fade along with the dirt and the dust. So. Um, you would turn that on and you can select any color that you might want and then also turning on the dust and adjusting it to the color that you want. 
just make sure you got a little bit of contrast between the color of this dust and dirt layer and you also have you know between that and and this lower color fade um, so you can play around with it until you get a look you know that looks right to you um, I have a little bit of contrast but it it worked out nice um, it kind of looks like there's a little bit of dirt or dust blowing um, in their lower body um, let's see here you have the option to uh, raise and lower this wood um, so that is also something that you might want to do just depending on where everything falls um, and I think that's pretty much it um, you know for the horizontal everything else is set up the same way um, so we'll just jump over to the memory mate and even though most of you probably are already familiar with how the memory mates are set up we'll uh, we'll go ahead and cover it just to make sure we touch on everything alright so we have our memory mate pulled up here and um, it's pretty much set up very similar to the way that the 4x5 horizontal is so you do have the option for a lower color fade and the dirt and the dust which you can set that up um, but let's talk about how we get this team image in here um, which is very simple you want to start with a 4x5 uh, horizontal team file you want to build your team image um, and you want to save it you know I save mine as JPEGs but once you have your team image created in a 4x5 format and you have the JPEG saved, it's very simple. We'll go to this folder here where it says insert 4x5 team image here. We'll open up this folder. There is a uh, sample image in here um, already. So we'll select that. And now we want to go to where we have our team image save so I'm gonna I'm gonna use this one for the example so you'll find your team image and you can just drag and drop it and this placed it just above the sample and inside the folder so now we want to scale it so we're gonna click on one of these anchor points in the corner and depending on how you have your setup you may or may not have to hold shift to constrain or retain the proportions I'm holding down shift and I'm just kind of lining up the edges. It does not have to be exact, but you want it to be pretty close. So get it where you want it. Of course, we want to turn the, uh, the sample image off. So now we have it in place. In this folder, there is a stroke outline. So if you want this uh, white to be a different color or if you want it thicker or thinner, you can double click here play around with that and there is a drop shadow that you can turn on or off or adjust if you want to um, we have the folder just above it for your individual subject images so you'll put your subject images in here and of course you can change the text we've covered all of that the other scenario is um, the event that you have a, a subject image that is facing in the opposite direction and so let's flip him to face the other way so you may like the way that looks and it might work for you but if it were me I would probably slide him over and so you can position them over here and it's very simple but you would want to select this folder where you insert your 4x5 team image and you also want to by holding down command or control you want to click and select lower text doing it this way I've got this text set up to be centered proportion so it's gonna always kind of be centered with this uh, team image that you drop in here so we have them both selected now we can click on an anchor point I hold down shift and just click and drag over and that's it so you can create now one thing you might do is go ahead and save this as a different file name you can say left oriented right oriented or whatever works for you um, and that way you don't have to keep switching them back and forth you can create two um, but that is a question that comes up so I want to make sure I covered it and I think that is everything I hope that is everything um, these things always kind of drag on pretty long but um, I just get a lot of 
you know, different questions and I'm not always available to answer immediately. So I want to make sure I have as much information um, with visual uh, as possible to hopefully help you guys out. So that's all I have today. Uh, it's time to move on to the next one. Uh, but until next time, we'll see you.